What's up everyone? Today we're going to go through the resolution and frame rate options on the EOS R5. This may be beneficial for you because there are some things you may or may not know about the frame rates and resolutions in the Canon R5. So let's get to it. What's up everyone, my name is James and this is The Engineering Filmmaker where we talk about photo, video, travel, and tech. If you're interested in any of these topics, feel free to hit that little old subscribe button down below. We also have a forum if you wanna join that. That'll be in the description where we can ask questions, answer questions, grow as a community, and more. So let's start with full HD, which would be your 1080p modes. Fun fact, the EOS R5 does not have any 720p modes. So. Number one on the list is Full HD IPB mode light. Now light was kind of a random thing that I saw that was added. Basically, it just puts it at a lower bit rate, which means your file sizes will be lower and everything will just be smaller. Now you're also gonna get lesser quality, etc., out of this, and it only shoots in 25 frames per second and 30 frames per second. The next two things are Full HD 24 frames, 25 frames, and 30 frames per second. And both IPB and All Eye can be shot. Then we get the Full HD 60p, which can also be shot in IPB or All Eye. Now these frame rates and resolutions were nothing special because it's just Full HD. Now we're gonna get into the fun stuff and starting with 4K 120 frames per second or 100 frames per second, depending on what part of the world you live in. Now this mode can only be shot in All Eye. This 4K 120 frames per second mode applies in both UHD and DCI. If you're curious of the difference between the two, DCI is slightly wider, so it's not going to be the same aspect ratio. Let's get into the next one, which is a fun one. This is called 4K HQ or 4K Fine, depending on if you're looking at in the camera or in the specs. It's the same thing. Basically what this is, is it's 8.2K oversampled footage for 4K. So basically it takes 8.2K footage and puts it into a 4K resolution. In short term, it's just a really good way to get a very high quality shot. This resolution works in 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 30 frames per second. It does not work in any other modes. These are the only three frame rates it works for. You can shoot this in both IPB and All Eye. So I have gotten a lot of questions if I shot some of my shots that are 4K 60 in HQ or regular, 4K HQ or fine does not exist. It only goes up to 30 frames per second when you're trying to use this mode. The next mode is 4K 60 or 4K 50, depending on where you are in the world. You can do this also in IPB or All Eye. For the 4K 60 mode, again, DCI or UHD, up to you. Now here is the kind of weird part. So let's first talk about 8K UHD. You can shoot this mode in 23.98, 25, or 29.98 frames per second. When you're in the UHD mode, you can do all I or IPB, but there is no raw option in UHD. Ask me why, can't tell you. Now let's get into 8K DCI. 8K DCI can shoot 23.98, 24, 25, and 29.98 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Now DCI 8K can shoot both IPB and all I just like UHD, but now in DCI you have the raw option. So you have to use DCI, which is the wider option to shoot raw. Now, the fun part with 8K raw, I wanted to mention this. I actually made a video about it. It's a quick tip. Uh, you cannot use digital stabilization when you are trying to use 8K raw. There's one last mode I wanted to mention, which is basically the same thing as other 4K settings, except for it's under the movie cropping settings. Basically what it does is it takes 5.1K footage and it oversamples it down to 4K. This will give you a better image quality. It's similar to the 4K Fine, except for the 4K Fine option or the HQ option uses the entire sensor. This time it's cropped, which is why it's called movie cropping. Uh, and basically it's the same thing. You get your 24 frames per second or your 30. Now I will be making another video. I will put it here whenever it comes up about how you can film in each one of these recording modes. It might be a little confusing because it's not as simple as just clicking the resolutions and finding what you need. Sometimes you have to apply certain options in order to get the one you need. So it'll be a short video if you're curious, but that's really it for today, guys. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, feel free to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.